Forge 103.9 and New Sound. Welcome back to Real Talk. It's your host, Matt Munoz, and it is time for our interview of the week, and I am joined in studio by a favorite, familiar figure, firmly established and currently active in the Central Valley art scene and arts education scene. Please welcome to Real Talk artist Diego Monterrubio. I'm going to give you my applause right there. Thank you. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, yeah. you know, when you were telling me before we went on there, so this is actually your first official radio interview, audio interview. You've yeah. done some you've done some TV, but eh, TV, what what's TV? Exactly. We want to be here. We want to be here live. Yeah, yeah. You're talking with a brother right here who knows yeah. you well. Now, uh, so, you know, how's your day going? Yeah. Things have been good. I've been um I'm um becoming working in the studio, working in the classroom, working in the studio. You are an arts educator. You are a professor of art at Bakersfield College. I work at several schools. Oh, um, I picked wow. up by, um, I'm in my ninth year at Bakersfield College. I'm an adjunct professor at Bakersfield College. I teach drawing, painting, uh, I lecture art history. Um, my classes are full, man. The kids love it. I, I, I teach how I talk, you know. I'm a, I feel like I'm an animated, you know, person on stage and, you know, I just let them have it, you know. That's fantastic. And then uh, five years ago, I uh, picked up a job with Kernai School District. And so I'm teaching at a um, continuation squad of Shafter. Oh, and that's so, um, great. And so I like um, spreading myself out, you know. Wow, you, are, you have a lot. Okay, so I can't wait to get into this interview. Okay, so, I, you know, now... I've known you over the years. You've been a presence in the arts community here in town, and I've followed the things you've done. You've you've been active in so many different areas. I love your works. Um, you always represent uh, Latino culture. Uh, we you, you you make us very proud with the way you portray us in your art, and you get involved, and you're always very positive. But I want to talk. I want to go back to your personal history, like. Let's talk about your own personal roots. Where Where are you from? So I'm uh, from Tampico, Tamaulipas, but I'm also from Porterville and Lindsay, California. Oh. You know, so I'm, I feel like I'm always crossing borders all the time. You know? <laughs> you know, my, my father's from Michoacan. My mother's from Tamaulipas. Um, I'm from the Cal. I'm from I'm from the San Joaquin Valley. Wow. You know? So when did you When did you come over to uh, to the states? Uh, we're like seven years old. Oh. We're seven years old now. Um, but I got sent back every summer. My grandfather was a painter. He was an illustrator for Coca-Cola. And so, really? uh, yeah, so he found one of my drawings when I was a little kid. And he says, guess Esto, what is it? What are you doing with this? You know, and I said, I'm just playing. You know, he said, well, let's take a look at what you can do. And I guess he saw something in me. And after that, my parents started sending me back and forth to make sure I spent some time with, with my first mentor, my maestro, you know. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. What's your uh, abuelo's name? Victor Monterrubio. Oh, el, el maestro. Victor. El maestro Victor Monterrubio. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, so, all right. So we've established that. Tamaulipas to Porterville. You know, Porterville is one of those little tiny towns, kind of like McFarland, where I'm from. Yeah. We, that's why I think that's why we. We. I feel like we're. We're. You know. We're. We're practically Paisan right here. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Central Valley. Yeah. And we. We kind of have the same things. You know, our parents coming over here for for better life and and the things that they always so encouraging and art being such a yeah one of one of the most beautiful kind of focal points of our roots. It's right there in the tree. All right. So, what was family life like? Um, growing up, it was. Uh, um, it was somewhat, somewhat of a little bit battle there because uh, my my father is a um, my, comes from a migrant family, you know. So they did the whole migrant trail from, you know, working in from Texas to south to the southwest up and down California. Mm -hmm. uh, family of ten. Um, wow. Yeah, ha you know, half of them, you know, born in Michoacan, the other half born in labor camps all over the all over the southwest, mm -hmm. all over Aslan. That's that's where they yeah. you know, worked at. And so I spent a lot of years working with my father in the fields, you know, uh, picking fruit, driving the tractor, driving the truck. Um, I think my father, my father wanted me to kind of follow in his footsteps, mm -hmm. but you know, but my destino was different. You know, my, my grandfather was a painter. My mother dressed as designer, and so there's some arts already in this in my blood. And my grandfather always told me, "Lo, lo tienes en la sangre." It's in my blood, you know. Yeah. And so it was a little battle between my father and I, because you know he wanted me to be with him and yeah. and I, I destiny was pulling me in a different yeah. way was yeah. the, so was your grandfather on your uh, mother's or your father's side? on my mother's side oh your mother's yeah. side oh yeah. so okay so that's all hey this is my grandson but he's like but this is my son yeah, yeah. oh yeah. So, so, there's, there's, so it was a little battle there you know for for my for myself and it's, it's interesting it's like I'm the only one of both set families that makes art mm -hmm. I'm the only one yeah, kind of yeah. sounds like mine too. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sure, we're not related somehow. <laughs> we're from the valley. That's how we are. <laughs> I know. Yeah. All right. So, wow. Okay. So your uh, father, family of ten. Same. Same with. Same with your mom. Did she have a no, large family? No. My mother only had. Uh, she only has two other siblings. Three sisters in total. Oh, yeah. So all girls. And so how? What is the kind of the the makeup of the siblings in your in your dad's side? Um, there's an architect. There was some construction workers. 
Uh, just mostly just working people. Work, blue collar. Yeah, all the yeah, way. blue collar working people. Wow. Yeah. So you come over here, plant your roots right here in the Central Valley. You start going along your way. Now, growing up, I always like to know like the experience from a young immigrant in a new land. You know, you said you came over here when you were seven, then they put you in public schools. Yeah. Did you know, did you have to learn English when you got here? So I think that was the neat part about my my parents is um, we all kind of were learning the English language at the same time. You know, so my father had already been here a little bit and my mother picked up some languages and then I'm now I'm being taught in, in, in an English school. So I'm they're teaching me, I'm teaching them, you know, and then my sister doesn't come around until four years later. So she came in. We we're already speaking English when she yeah. by the time she came. But uh, it was it was it was interesting growing together, the three of us. You know, my mother was 19 when she had me. My father was 24. So a very young, young people, you know, and and then trying to, you know, live into the struggle of, you know, a different country and stuff. Yeah. Oh, let, well, let, let me see. So how many are in your how many siblings? do you have i have one sister only. oh it's just you just, two. just two of us yeah oh wow yeah she lives in fresno so, oh yeah. fresno yeah. yeah okay all right so let me ask you about this so your let me what are your earliest memories of of arts of the arts okay so visual <clears throat> it could be visual it could be dance it could be music what are some of the things that you when you when i say what do you remember from art as a kid um like I said, my my father, my grandfather was an illustrator for Coca Cola. So that was your first that was it. introduction. That was it. So I got to see his palette, his, his studio space, and like I said, the funny part is like I've been in there looking at things, but never really learning anything until he found one of my drawings, and he says, "You know what? Uh, next week." Uh, you're gonna start spending one hour with me in the morning in the studio. Then you can go play with your friends, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm, you know, I'm eight. You know, by the time by that time they're kind of sending us back and forth. And I said, uh, well, I don't want to go in the studio. I want to go play, right? And then he said, I got to, I got to check something about you real quick. And I was like, all right. So he's teaching me colors. Now I'm, I know that this color is making this color. And I'm, you know, and I'm seeing sculptures and stuff around the room. So it took about a week. And the next thing you know, I fell in love with art. I didn't want to go play no more. You know, he, really? Yeah. It was just, it happened just like that, like magic, like that. Okay, so education. You went to Porterville City College. <clears throat> so I went then, to Porterville College, um, and then from Porterville College, um, Tom and, a, and another professor, they would um, create these field trips, and one of the field trips was to the Bay Area. And so now I'm now I'm in, you know taking us to these museums. You look at the big city and the metropolis, you know, and now I'm really seeing that there's Picasso and there's you know all these you know I'm, I'm, the I'm class, seeing the real the deal. I'm seeing the real deal, you know, not in the books anymore. I'm face to face, you know. And I risked when I realized like, I need to go to a bigger city. I got to get out of Porterville. I got to go. And so I get myself into San Jose State. Right? I go to San Jose State. I go to San Jose State for a year and I drop out. Right? I met some people there who were, make, they were, doing, they were hustling some art somewhere up in South San Francisco and everything. And they said, hey, Diego, you should, uh, you should come join us one of these days for that, for go sell some artwork. And I was like, all right. So I took like four pieces of artwork and I sold all four. Right? A month later, they invite me again. I go do it again. I sell like four more paintings. Another month, I go sell like six paintings this time, and that's when they said, "They go, hey, what do you what do you do what, what do you do all the time?" And I said, well, "I go to school, and then I got a job at you know night job at night time, go stacking some shelves, and then I paint anytime I can paint." And they said, "You need to quit your job, you need to quit school, and just paint full time, man." I said, "You got some cool stuff here, and people keep buying it." And I was like, ah, "It's it's okay, I don't know, I don't know." So then I had to call my parents, and I had to tell my mom and my dad, I said, "You know, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna drop out of school, and I'm gonna paint full time." Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, "Are you crazy? What are you talking about? It's so hard for you to get out of this out of this area. That um, um, what are you gonna do?" And I was like, "You know what? If I don't if I don't do this now, I feel like I'm gonna w- lose this window of opportunity. You know, I, I don't know if it's it'll, if it'll ever be there again." I go, "So if I don't take this risk, then I don't know." And then he said, "Well, if you're gonna do that, then you're on your own. You know, we're, we're gonna cut you off. We can't help you no more." And then I said, "Well, then I'm on my own. I gotta do it." And so for the, for the next six years, I was just painting and making making my rent, making paying my rent, you know, buying my wine, hanging out, you know, living this bohemian <laughs> bohemian art life. And then, um, which and then, a lot of people don't do that. It's that a, you you actually were you took you went you jumped into the journey. I did it. I was yeah. like, if I'm gonna if I need I needed to find out, am I really what people been you know patting my back about I mean, you're an artist you're an artist you know we could keep on talking forever but i know you got you've got paintings you got people to students to teach just look up diego monterubio art it's a you know it's almost like you'd say it's it might be a common name when you start looking up you might but you'll know who i'm talking about 
handsome guy. He's got the mustache. <laughs> he's smiling. You'll you'll know when you look at him. It's like, oh, this is the artist. <laughs> he's an artist. Look at the way he's living his life. You know, he's got no shirt on. He's chilling on the beach. He's got his cocktail. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's living it the way he should be living his life. But hey, thank you so much for being on Real Talk, man. Can I get a seat si puede, man? Absolutely, si se puede, Bakersfield. Oh, that land. Let's do it. All right, we'll be back. Thank you so much, Diego. Thank you. Bye-bye.